Hey guys, John here. This video is going to be on quaternions. Um, it's going to be actually really short. Basically, what is a quaternion? It is how a unity handles rotations. Uh, rotations are handled through what are known as Euler angles. Now, Euler angles are nothing to be afraid of. They're literally just rotation values along a specified axis. So, for instance, if I wanted to access my Euler angle on the x-axis, it's right here. It's the zero on the x-axis. My Euler angle for the y is zero. My Euler angle for the z is zero. Now here I have cube A, and right now my x rotation is 353. How can I set that rotation to zero, zero, zero? Well, <clears throat> using the quaternion class, we have a function called Euler, which allows me to set three parameters as floats for the rotation. So if I wanted to change that rotation, I first have to access the rotation and then change it. So I can say here, transform.rotation, not joint, whatever that was, uh, <clears throat> transform.rotation equals, and then the quaternion dot Euler. And you'll see here it says quaternion Euler, and it's asking for a vector 3. So I can pass through here. And actually, you know what? It's asking for a vector 3 or just three floats. So I can say here, 0, 0, 0. And you'll see there that's going to reset the rotation on the x, y, and z. So when I run the game, there you go, 0, 0, 0. Now, we can get a little bit more advanced with that, too. Um, <clears throat> for instance, that's how you can set a rotation. So in a game, if you're in, especially in a 2D game, if you have to swap between going back and forth on a sprite, you swap the Y to be 180, and that flips the character. All right? So what, um, what else can we do with Quaternion? There's one common function in the Quaternion class that's very useful for, for instance, with AI. And what that is, is that's a looking at an object. So for instance, if, you have, if you're running, if you're playing a survival game, whatever, you have AI that can look at you, or a tower defense game, um, they can look at you uh, through a function called quaternion.lookrotation. Right, and quaternion.lookrotation, if we were to look it up here, let's go to uh, Google. So quaternion.look rotation, here we go here. Quaternion API. And <clears throat> the function that you'll probably most use for your AI in your games is this right here. Look rotation. Creates a rotation with a specified forward. So your enemies are facing forward and you want to change that forward direction. Well, you do it through quaternion look rotation. And check this out. They have here a relative position, which is the direction formula. So destination minus the source. So where you want to look minus your position. And then they say quaternion rotation equals the function quaternion look rotation, and they pass through your direction to face. And then here they're assigning the transform dot rotation equals rotation. This is called a temporary variable. Everything they're doing here is just temporary variables, um, which is okay to do it that way. So that's a good practice. So how do we actually make use of this in a scenario that makes sense? Well, say we have here two cubes, right? I have cube A and cube B is in scene two somewhere. Where is it? Okay they're, oh, okay, they're on top of each other. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. We're going to move him forward and over here. All right, so that's going to be cube B, okay? Now what I want is I want cube B to always look at cube A. So this is going to be cube A, and this one here is going to be cube B. I want cube B to always look at cube A, okay? So in order to do that, cube B nodes needs to know who cube A is. So we're going to go ahead and say here public game object and then here we have cube A and we can go and assign that. <clears throat> so cube A is here and I want it to rotate towards him using that look rotation. He always needs his forward direction is to always face him. This is useful for tower defense games and any AI you have. So using that scripting reference we saw that formula for how to calculate the facing direction. Target position minus transform position. So the formula for it is technically direction to face equals um, destination minus the source. So let's have a vector for that. So vector three, um, direction to face. So direction to face equals destination, which is cube a dot transform dot position minus the source, which is us. So minus uh, our transform dot position. And now I'm going to go ahead and say here, I'm going to grab my current rotation and I'm going to assign it to the quaternion.lookrotation function. 
quaternion dot look rotation. Look what it says. It says look rotation vector three forward. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pass through, just like in the scripting reference, the direction of face. That's going to give us our new forward direction. And if we test that out, you're going to see here that cube B is always going to look at cube A. See that? And if I were to move cube A in the scene view, he's going to rotate towards him. So you can see how useful this is in AI if you were making a tower defense game. Look rotation is one of the most amazing things you can do. Now, <clears throat> with that being said, what about local Euler angles? Or what about Euler angles specifically? There might be a time where you need to do something with Euler angles. Like, for instance, if you ever created a mouse look script, you have to manipulate the Euler angle um, to rotate along a specified axis. Or to smoothly rotate along a specified axis, I should say. Now, what is a local, an Euler angle? An Euler angle is just an easier way for us to handle rotations. You'll notice here if I say transform.rotation, if I say transform.rotation, it says quaternion, right? Well, if I do transform.euler angles, it's a vector 3. So instead of having to deal with quaternions, I can deal with a vector 3 instead. So here I can say, for instance, uh, if I wanted to create like a simple mouse look script, right? The way I would do that is I would basically say here, I need to get access to, um, I need, there's a variable that Unity gives you in the input manager that tells you where on the x-axis your mouse is. If it's in the center, it's zero. If it's on the right side, it's a one. If it's on the left side, it's a negative one. And I can use that value to add to my rotation for a mouse look script. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically create a variable called mouse x, and it's going to hold where my mouse is on the x-axis. So input.getAccess, and it's called mouse x. <clears throat> and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my local Euler angle. So I'm going to say transform.local Euler angles, and it's a vector 3, and I'm going to say equals new vector 3. I want 0 for the x. I want my current local Euler angle on the y plus this mouse value so I can look left and right based on my mouse. So I'm going to go in here. I'm going to say transform.local Euler angles dot y plus the mouse x variable, and then you can do 0 for z. Now what that's going to do is every time I move my mouse, we're going to actually be able to rotate QB. You can see that. When I move my mouse, it gets rotated. And uh, here it is, QB. Okay. So based on the side of the screen I am, it's going to rotate the value. Okay. And he's actually fighting me on the rotation because he's trying to look at cube A. So I'm going to go ahead and actually just, uh, we're going to get rid of that real quickly. And now you'll see he's going to rotate more fluently. See that? So this could be used on your shooter games. You can make, that's how easy it is to make a custom mouse look script. Now there's a way we can clean up this code with the Euler angles. So Euler angles, they just allow us to use vector three instead of quaternion. Very cool. Um, what we're going to do here is you see this line of code? Very, very messy. Well, you can clean it up with a temporary variable. And the way we do that is we create a vector 3, because we're dealing with Euler angles, which convert from quaternion to Euler angle. And we say here, new rotation equals um, our current Euler angles. So we say transform.local Euler angles. All right, and then I want to modify just the y. So of our variable, which equals our current local Euler angles, I get the y, and I plus equals our mouse x, and I can multiply it by like 5 for sensitivity. Then I get my current local Euler angles, which are still the exact same, and I'm going to apply the changed y value by setting it to that new variable that we created, that temp variable. Okay, these are called temp variables. They're great. Um, they're great to use in C Sharp, and they're very efficient. They make your code look a lot cleaner as well. So this three lines of code here are the exact same as this one line of code. Also, we avoided the use of the new keyword, which is garbage collection. So. With that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Hope you have a little bit of a better understanding of the Quaternion class now. Uh, if you have any other questions on it, then go ahead and uh, send me a comment below and I'll be glad to answer it. Just know that Euler angles are just rotation values along the X, Y, and Z axis. Nothing to be afraid of. And yeah, see you next time.